Hello, I'm Daniela. I teach a lot of slow stitching and little sewing skill videos here on YouTube. Now today's video is a little different. I'm not going to show a project. Instead, I'm going to show how I store my sewing needles. I did a previous video where I explained the different types of hand sewing needles and their purposes, what their intended uses were for. And you can, of course, use any needle for any task that you want, but there are some with different size points or tips or eyes that really make the job easier. And that's the whole purpose of having different types of needles. I wanted to show you how I store them so that I can access them efficiently and easily. It's kind of a fun three-stage process that I use. And I'll also show you in the video how I store my bookmaking needles and what I do with old dull needles. So here goes. So I have three stages of how I store my hand sewing needles and some deliberate specifications for each. So let's start with my everyday storage. So for my everyday storage, pin cushions are my go-to. I store my hand sewing needles along with some pins in my pin cushions and I have many of them. I have about half a dozen. I probably rotate three or four um, during the course of a day just because I store needles and I don't like to have all my needles on one pin cushion Just the ones that I'm using currently and I usually store them with string and the string really doesn't have to be the string that I'm going to use in that project the purpose of that string is just so that I can find the needle easily also with the string I can see Typically, I store thinner string in the thinner needles and the thicker six strand floss on the thicker needles. So it kind of helps me figure out which needle I want for the task. Now these needles are not labeled, nor is the pin cushion. And I've read that you can find pin cushions with labels so that you can keep all your Chanel needles together and maybe your sharps in one section or your embroidery needles in another section. I've never found that. Um, I don't really even know if that would work for me. Offhand, I couldn't really tell you which needle is which for which designated task without just inspecting it further. And sometimes I'm not even sure I'm 100% correct. I look for the needle, the width, the size, the size of the eye, according to the task that I'm using. And it's really irrelevant to me if it's an embroidery needle versus a Chanel needle or a tapestry needle, as long as I have the proper point on the needle and size. Now my second stage of storing needles, and I keep this on my work surface and very easy to find, is just a cigar box. And it's filled with additional sewing needles. Now these sewing needles are labeled. So I keep them in little clear tubes and I made a point of labeling them. So I have my darners here, my tapestry, etc. And I sometimes purchase needles that come in little cases and I'll just leave them in here, particularly if they're labeled. I also have my sharps on a little metallic box here and this is just really handy because the needles don't fall out. I don't tend to use my sharps very often so that's why I keep them separate in their own spot. Sometimes I'll purchase needles online and they don't specify the size but there is something interesting about them. For example these are large needles with large eyes so I just labeled them as such and I also really like some of these needle cases. There are some that are just plain and I have my extra needles stored in here. And then I have my long stash of upholstery needles and doll making needles. And so I keep them on just some upholstery fabric. I'll also keep some of these large needles here, these large tapestry needles. I don't tend to use them very often, but when I need them, I know exactly where they are. Two other things that I keep in my needle case for pretty much everyday use, even though I'll probably only use it once or twice a week, is a bodkin. And it's not technically a needle. Some people categorize it as a needle, but it's just handy to know where one is and I can access it very quickly. The last thing that I keep in this box is just some silica packets because the enemy of needles is moisture and I want to keep them dry, not damp. And if there's any moisture on my hand or even humidity in the air, I'm hoping this silica packet will help me. Now what I do with my tubes is I label them. Now some of them, as you can see, have this tape on it and it's not the most attractive, but that's because sometimes these cases have little holes on the bottom of the needle case. So instead of buying all new cases, I just tape them up 
in this case I'm using washi tape and I just cover it and the needles don't fall out for my larger needles they don't fall out anyway but for the smaller ones they might so I just cover it with a little bit of masking tape or in my case washi tape and then I label them and so if I have additional needles or I find different types I'll just continue to add them to my list and just add them to my case now my third stage of hand sewing needle storage are my extras, my stockpile. And these are ones that I keep in their little packets when I get them from the store, mainly because they're labeled, and also because they're so slim. They're usually in just these little flat cases. And I just take these out of this container and stick them in the drawer that I have. And this is a great way that I can store them. I only go to them when I need them, and that might be once a month or even less sometimes. I do store another silica gel packet in with those, again, just to keep that moisture at bay. Now there are two other things I like to discuss with hand sewing needles and how I store them. I have some book making needles. I keep them in this little plastic case and these are all varied sizes and shapes. Some are curved, some are rounded, some are pointed, some are variations of bodkins and I just keep them in this case. I only use these to sew paper, or if I'm using something for my bookmaking, maybe a really hard book cloth. And I just keep them together with a silicon packet, and I keep this in my bookmaking little case. So I keep it all together, all my supplies. But I thought it was worth mentioning storage of these needles because I do use them to hand sew and I want to keep them dry and intact and sharp as long as I can. Now lastly, needles and pins dull. We can try and sharpen some pins or some needles. Sometimes with a little strawberry pin cushion you'll see a little mini one and that's full of emery and so sometimes you can sharpen your needles to a point with that um, but sometimes they get to the point of no return and in that case I just dropped them into this old spice jar that I put a button on just so I'd recognize what it was for. I keep them in this jar so I don't get poked and so I don't just discard them into the trash. I keep them in this container just for safety reasons and I tried to make the container stand out to me and be somewhat attractive. When the container is full or heavy I can dispose of it and I just tape it shut and so that nobody gets harmed with the sharps here. I can bring these to a place where I bring syringes or any place that recycles that type of waste. And that's just a safe precaution. It's nothing you have to do regularly, just whenever you need to, whenever this jar gets full. So that's the way that I store my various hand sewing needles. It's a little bit of a complicated process, but I do spend a lot of time with my hand sewing, so I try and make it easy and accessible for me. How do you store your hand sewing needles and what methods do you think are really effective? Be sure to comment below. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did, please give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe. Thanks for joining me today.